Good to be with you guys, fellowship. I hope you all are watching, and we're so excited to spend some time with you and with God. We're going to worship together. Go ahead. One, two. Right where you're at, why don't you do this? He deserves all the praise and all the glory, and we're going to do our best here. Sing with us. Here in the light we find what makes us come alive, a sacrifice of praise. A city on a hill, surrendered to your will, your glory on display. Your glory on display Right there, come on Awesome in this place Jesus, you are awesome in this place Worthy to be praised Jesus, you are worthy to be praised You will be praised You will be Your love, a force and grace, consuming every space, it's uncontainable. You're coming like a flood, our hearts are filling up, all things are possible. Come on, sing that. All things are possible. Awesome in this place, Jesus, you are awesome in this place. You are worthy to be praised. You will be praised. Oh, you will be praised. Come on, your praise goes on. presence right now wherever you're at and we don't have to live out of fear we know that he's true he's real and we thank you God that we can give you that control in this moment we're going to sing about that when darkness tries to roll over my bones when sorrow comes to steal the joy I own, when broken. 
brokenness and pain is all I know and I won't be shaken no I won't be shaken my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love yeah. come on sing it with me shame is a good has some place to hide I am not a captive to the I won't be shaken. I won't be shaken. All together, my fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance when I stand in your love. My fear doesn't stand a chance. Let's stand a chance. Sing this. There's power that can break every day. There's power that can empty our grave. There's resurrection power that can save. There's power in your name. Power in your name. Let's sing that again. Will not fail me now. 
you won't fail me now is in the waiting the same God who's never late is working all things come on say that you're working all things out yeah. oh yes I will lift you high in the lowest valley yes I will bless your name Fellowship of the Rockies. This is Eli Finley, the youth, youth pastor here at the church. We are excited that you are joining in with us on this feed to worship the King this weekend. As always, there are many ways to give here at Fellowship. You can give online. You can mail in any tithes and offerings that you have, or there is a secure mail slot here at the church that you can drop in on the business store. I'm not sure that I'm the first one to notice that there are many things that have changed about the way that we do ministry. You see, all of our meeting schedules have changed, our rhythms have changed, all of it has. But the one that has taken the most toll on all of us is simply the distance. It is simply the distance that we have to maintain from each other physically in order to keep one another safe. But I'm reminded that, that I serve a God that can work in any situation for those who take refuge in Him. I'm reminded this week of all the things that God has already done in isolation. Paul wrote three books of the Bible, Ephesians, Philippians, and Colossians, under house arrest in Rome. He knows exactly what it's like to be locked in his home and not have any toilet paper available to him. <laughs> I'm reminded of David this week, that he learned everything that he needed to fight Goliath while he was isolated from his brothers and from his family, while he was out in his family's fields shepherding the sheep. That's where he learned what he needed to know. Jesus himself sought isolation to be separate from man to be closer to God. There are so many things that we can do in this time of isolation that God will move through. He will show himself through. We're reminded that his presence is what we need. His presence is all that we need. David says in Psalms chapter 17 verse 15, he says, and he's speaking to the Lord, he says, I will see your face in righteousness. When I awake, I will be satisfied in your presence. God's presence is more than enough for us. And I want to speak that over anyone watching this, that Jesus' presence is enough for you, no matter what you're walking through right now. Let me pray for us this weekend. Father God, we trust that your presence is enough. 
we know that you are moving even now when, when things don't seem to be working the way that we had envisioned for so long. Such a different situation than anything we have ever walked through. And yet you are here. And you are moving. And you are all around us. God, I pray that you would continue to make yourself known that the beautiful gospel of your son would continue to pour out of every church all over the world. That even in these moments when we are physically separate, people would be spiritually joined with you. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Eli. You know, in these moments... We can rest in him knowing he's in control, knowing that he covers us in every moment of our lives. We just have to draw close to him and give it to him.
Hey, fellowship! Uh, we are glad that you have have joined us, and 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 I, and I would tell you this: that this has been one of our prayers, actually, through uh, this whole year, that you would just understand what it means to just to be still and know that He is God. To be able to rest in Him is actually what we're going to look at tonight when we look at the twenty third Psalm. But before we do, I just I just I have a couple of announcements for you, a couple of things that I would just let you know about that are coming. Um, and so when we started this journey out together. Uh, it seems like months ago, uh, it was just five weeks ago, but I don't know if you're like me, but one week in quarantine can seem like a month. And so uh, so five weeks ago, we started this journey out together, and I, I let you know about the Fellowship Five, the five promises that we're making to you, the five things that we're saying that we're going to do throughout this whole journey. And so let me, just, let me just walk through them real quickly, and here's what they say is, is the first one is this, is we're going to walk through crisis together. And so we're, we're going to do this together. Uh, you are not alone. God is with us, and you have a church family with you. And so the second thing is this, is we're going to help you and your family stay spiritually healthy. And so we're moving more and more of our classes to Zoom and some other things as well. And, and so the third one was, was this. We're going to continue to offer worship services. What we're doing is online. We're going to serve you if you get sick. And then we're going to help you serve others who are in need. And, and so one of the ways that we've done that is through our buddy system. And it's amazing what God is doing through the buddy system. I think we've made well over 3,500 phone calls uh, currently into homes and to people of our church. And, and let me tell you something. These just aren't really quick phone calls. I mean, sometimes these phone calls can be 5 minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, up to 45 minutes that some of our callers have, have had when they've called into a home and they prayed with someone or they counseled someone or they've encouraged someone. Uh, we've linked people to people, a buddy with, with someone that needed a buddy and someone that was willing to buy groceries and run errands for them. And it is amazing how the church has just kind of kind of stepped up and began serving one another. And so the buddy system is, is, is active and it's going. We have a food drive that is coming this weekend, uh, Saturday, April the 25th from 8.30 to, to 2.30 here at the church. Uh, you, can, you can just pull up and you don't even have to get out of your vehicle. Um, and, and you can pop your trunk, pop the hatch, whatever. And then our, our ministry partners are going to come out and serve you and... and, and uh, <coughs> Excuse me, and get the get the food and and put it in a safe place. We're going to follow all of the guidelines that Governor Polis have given us, and so you can go to our website, Facebook account, and find the things that are needed in case that you don't have access to that. It's just peanut butter and then then jelly and pasta and pasta sauce and applesauce and then some canned goods, canned fruit, uh, canned soup, canned vegetables, and some of those other things. And then also another way that we're trying to connect a little bit deeper as well is the women's ministry. And so the women's ministry is going to start offering some things online, and whether it's coffee with my girlfriend friends or Bible studies or some other things like that. Fact is, one is starting the week of April the 25th on Monday nights from 7 to 8, and so you can get information about that and how to connect online, whether it's through Zoom or another platform, uh, by going to our website. So anyway, so those are the things that I just kind of wanted to catch you up on. And then if you have your Bible or electronic devices, and if not, no worries, the, script, the Scripture is going to come up on the screen as I read them. We're still in the 23rd Psalm, and and I don't know how long we're going to be in the 23rd Psalm. My Bible now just kind of automatically opens to the 23rd Psalm. Um, I am using that daily in some of my daily devotionals, my life journal, but I also am using the 23rd Psalm and try to read it a couple of times a day just in prayer, just to meditate or just to think on the, the verses and the encouragement that the 23rd Psalm brings us. And so tonight, today, or whenever you're viewing this, we're going we're gonna to be in verse 2. But before we get to verse 2 and I read that, I just, I just want to just remind you, and I don't have to remind you, but you know this, right? 
COVID-19 has kind of interrupted everything. It's interrupted our connections with people, our structures, our rhythms of life. It seems like everything has changed, and, and so we're spending a lot more time at home. Uh, we're, and, and as a result of that, some of the non-essential places are closed, some of the places like gyms and where we did recreation. And so for many of us, we're spending a lot of our time at home, and we may not be decompressing properly. And as a result of that... If you're not careful, your soul can get tired. fact is, I'm aware when my soul just isn't rested and my soul is just tired. And so as a res- result of that, many of us are not properly rested. And so we're, we're, we're thin and we're tired and, and we're, we're fragile. And you need to be aware of that. Because when we get into those, 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 those seasons in, that, in, in that, that area of our life, that we can, we can snap at people, we can get angry quickly, uh, things can come out of us, disappointment, frustration, some other things can come out of us. And so we just need to be aware of that and show a little bit of extra grace for one another and towards one another. And in fact, is my sermon topic for next, next week is quarantine quarrels, how to handle and how to ne- negotiate r- a r- Uh, relationships when you're all stuck together for large amounts of time, when you've been quarantined together. And so when you look at this issue, everything's changed in life. We're we're trying to learn some new things. We're learning new rhythms. And and many of you, like I said, are working from home and you're also homeschooling kids and and, and you're with kids and you're with kids 24-7. You're with kids a lot. And it's creating a lot of emotions. And, And you know what? You're not the only one learning new things. I'm I'm learning new things. I'm learning how to lead a church through a pandemic. I'm, I'm learning how to teach over, over Zoom and learning other social media platforms and learning how to connect with people, even with social distancing in place, whether it's using technology and, and connecting people to people through the buddy system and some other things. And, and I'm also learning how to communicate over a camera. It's one of the things that I told God. I, I never had a desire to be a TV preacher. And now I'm preaching into like this cold, emotionalist camera in an empty room. And so we're all learning, we're all learning new things. Fact is, just, just real quickly, and it's just a personal story, but this, this last week, or actually a couple of weeks ago, Karen said she said she needed, needed, needed a perm. And so I'm like, well, you know what? I, I think I can do that. And so I opened up a salon uh, in our house, and, 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 and so other things happened. And, and so Karen showed up, of course, because she she's like always there. And I told her, I said, you know what? You're my very first cu- customer ever. It's my first day on the job, and so as a result of that, I'm going to have to watch a lot of YouTube videos as we go, walk through this process, but I think I could do it. But two, two things that are positive about that. One, this isn't going to cost you anything. I'm not going to charge you for this. And the second thing, we're in quarantine. If it goes bad, who's going to know? And so we're all learning new rhythms. We're all learning new things. And so David in the Psalms, in fact, this is one of our life journaling verses in Psalm 11. David is dealing with some things. The whole world is like turning upside down for David. And so David comes and he begins talking about this issue. That it just seems like the world is turning upside down. In Psalm 11, verse 3, the scripture says that David asked this question. He was phenomenal at the questions he asked. And so he asked this question. He says, if the foundations are destroyed, what can the righteous do? In other words, if the foundations of the world are destroyed, if everything that I thought that that was a foundation of the world is like crumbling and going away and the world is turning upside down, then how does a believer to respond? What do we do? And so David begins walking through that. And David says, and you can read it for yourself, we don't have time uh, in, in, in this sermon to read the whole psalm, but David begins to say things like, some people are telling you you should fly away. Some people are telling me we should escape. And you know what? My concern is that's what's happening. There are a lot of people trying to escape during this time. And they're trying, and and addictions are on the rise, and some other things are on the rise. And so David said there's a healthy way and there's an unhealthy way to respond during this time. And David came to the place at the end of this psalm, and he says, you know what? God, you're still in control. God, you're still on your throne. You can still be trusted. And David sang a lot in worship about this issue of just standing, and, and, and Pastor Eli made a reference to that. And listen, let me just encourage you now and just tell you that, you know what? We may be standing six feet apart, but we are standing. 
We may be standing in separate households and separate buildings and, and worshiping together, but guess what? We're still standing. And we're going to continue to stand together. We are in this together, and we're going to walk through this together as we walk through this time and through this season of our life. See, David realized this. David realized that he's totally dependent on God. Then when the foundations crumble, when the foundations of this world go away and they begin drifting and splitting and everything else, David came to this place and said, you know what? I've realized I'm totally dependent on God. He is still on his throne. He is still... He's still in control. And see, we come to Psalm 23, and again, David wrote this psalm. And David's writing about how dependent the sheep are on the shepherd. And then he relates it to us and says, and how dependent we are on the good shepherd, on God. And so he makes this statement, Psalm 23, verse 2. It's, it's, it's just the only verse we're going to look at tonight. And he goes, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me. He leads me beside still waters. Now listen, if you were a shepherd and if you were during this time when, when David wrote this, you would, you'd be totally tracking with what he just said. Fact is, you would get it. You would understand it. You would understand that, listen, this is the picture of paradise. This is the picture of rest. See, that's what I want to talk to you about this weekend. I want to talk to you about quarantine rest. You see, when I say that, when I see quarantine rest, a lot of people immediately go to how many hours of night are you sleeping? Is it eight hours? Is it, is it, is it nine hours? Is it 12 hours? But he, here's the deal, and you know this, right? You, you can sleep eight hours, you can sleep 12 hours, and you can get up, and you're still tired. You can get up and you're not rested. See, I'm not talking about the amount of sleep you get, and yes, that's important. What I'm talking about is truly resting in him, truly trusting him, so that even in the midst of a crisis, even in the midst of a quarantine, even in the midst of COVID-19, that you're able to rest in him and understand that he is in control. See, a shepherd would know this issue of rest and refreshment. He would know how critical it was for the sheep. And, and so a shepherd normally, it was just their normal routine. They'd get the sheep up about 4 o'clock in the morning while it was still cool, and they would begin to walk them. And as they would walk, they would graze, and they'd graze in a meadow. And, and, and the sheep, when they walked, they're, they're just like never still. But by 2 o'clock that afternoon, then, then all of a sudden it's hot and the sun is like beaming down on them and, and the sheep are hot and they're tired and they're thirsty. But, but a wise shepherd knows that even though the sheep want water, that would be the worst thing to give them. Their food is still, or their grass in their stomachs are still undigested. And, and if the shepherd took them to water and filled their, 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 their stomachs with, with water, that, that it could damage the sheep. In fact, is it, it could kill them. And so he knew that that wasn't an option. So he had them, it's a strong word, but he said, he makes them lie down. And he would force the sheep to lie down, to do something they really didn't want to do. And he would make them lie down in a meadow, in a cool, soft spot. And while the sheep are lying down, they will not eat. And you know what they do? They chew their cud, which is nature's way of digesting. It was, it was for their own good that the shepherd made them lie down. I don't know if you've ever thought about this. And if you haven't, then, then I want to be the first one to get you to think about this or even to start focusing on this. Rest is part of God's plan for you. Rest is a part of his plan for you because he loves you, because he cares for you. It's extremely important for us to understand that God is a good shepherd and God desires for us to rest at him. It is, listen, rest is a part of God's plan for you. It's not part of God's plan for us to be tired and stressed out all the time and, and carrying anxiety. He wants us to be rested, and he wants us to enjoy life and to be able to enjoy him. In fact, is Psalm 127, verse 2. Here's, here's what the psalmist writes. It says, it is useless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, anxiously working for food to eat. For God gives rest, not sleep. I'm telling you, this is so important for us to understand. Yes, sleep's a part of it, but God wants you to truly rest in him. 
And he says, for God gives us rest to, to what? To the one he loves. To you. And man, I get it, I understand. This can be hard when you're working from home. I get it, I understand. I'm living that right now. It's like there are no boundaries. It's like your office, it's just your home, and your laptop is there, your cell phone is there, your, anything that you use, whether it's a tablet or whatever, to communicate. It's like it's always there. And here's what I'm learning is it has a voice. And sometimes what makes it really difficult now is like, like we've broken all these boundaries and we brought our work into our home. And, and sometimes we build in a false belief and we believe, you know what, if I can just work longer and if I can work harder, I can fix this. Sometimes the most spiritual thing that you can do to rest is to go to bed, is to get some sleep, to have proper rhythms. How many times have you gone? I know, I know the number for me. In fact, is it happened just last week. How many times have we gone to the doctor and we're having some pains or we're having some issues and, 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 and the doctor simply tells us, you know what? You know what you need? You need to rest. You know what you need? You need to go home and you need to get some rest and you need to go to sleep. And see, a lot of times what we want is we just want a pill. We want something that we can take so we can just keep going at the speed in which we're going. But David comes to Psalm 23, and he's talking about God's love for us and God's care for us. And he says again, he says, he makes me. See, that word, he makes me, it's just so important because it's against our nature. See, it was, just a, it was against the nature of the sheep. They wanted to graze, and they wanted to get, get water because they're hot and they're thirsty. It was against their, and guess what? It's against our nature. But see, what he's saying is the good shepherd knows what we need. The good shepherd knows what is best for us. And so he says, he makes us lie down in green pastures. He leads us beside still waters or quiet waters, as the ESV says. And so it's this picture of paradise. It's this picture of resting in him. It's this picture of just totally trusting him, just with the imagery of this of this psalm. See, God is interested in your rest. God is interested in your recreation. God wants you to live a life of, of, healthy, of, of healthy rhythms, of balance, of rest and, re, and, and recreation, and, and to have a complete life. So, so, so I want to give you three principles, three points. And, and listen, I'm, I'm preaching this just right out of my life because if you know me, you know that I, I, I struggle with this, and I struggle with rhythms, and I struggle with healthy rhythms. And, and, um, and so this comes out of my life. And so I want to give you three things about this issue of rest. And the first one is this, is, is rest is a command. I don't know if you've ever thought about that, but that is a command in Scripture. God has commanded us to rest. Fact is, this issue of rest made the top ten. It, I mean, God thought it was so important for us to understand that it made the top ten. It, it, made, the, it made the ten commandments. And so here's what he says in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. And oh, by the way, this is a commandment with the most words. I just wonder if God knew that this was going to be the command that we're going to have the most problem with. So he says it's going to, be, it's going to need the most explanation. Verse 8, he says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. Own it. You shall not do any work. You or your son or your daughter, your male servant, your female servant, or your livestock. Or the sojourner who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath of the day and made it holy. And God gave us the Sabbath because he, because he loves us. And he wants to bless us and he wants us to have healthy rhythms in life. But, it's, but I'm telling you, it's also a witness to the world. It's a witness of the world that we're different. It's a witness of the world that we can pull away and we can trust God with that day. We can trust God with our life. And so God implemented the Sabbath, I believe, because he wanted to bless us. But it's also still a whole, it's, it's a witness to the world. And the reason he wants us to do this is because, because we are saying when we pull away and we honor the Sabbath, we are saying we're resting in him, we trust him, and we're going to pull away one day a week. 
and dedicate that to the Lord. It's, it's, it's a day, what the scripture tells us is a day uh, to be with your family and to rest and to relax and, and worship, a weekend celebration and celebrate that, that we are the people of God and to worship him. I mean, this is a commandment in scripture. And why is it it's sometimes the most difficult commandment in scripture? Why is it that when we look at like the top 10 and we look at the 10 commandments and, and we get it, there's consequences if we, if, we, if we break them, maybe all except for this one? I mean, we understand consequences, right? We understand that if we lie, there's a consequence. There's, there's going to create a problem. If we murder, there's a consequence. If we covet, there's a consequence. And why is it? And we think if we don't honor the Sabbath, there's it's not a consequence. When you, when you look at the Old Testament, you realize there's like three laws in the Old Testament. There's the moral law, the judicial law, and there's the ceremonial law. Here's the crazy thing. Only the Sabbath. The Sabbath was under all three. The Sabbath was under the judicial law. It was under the moral law, and it was under the ceremonial law. Sabbath, all, all Sabbath means is a day of rest. A day of rest from paid and unpaid work. That's important. Colossians tells us this. Listen, Colossians tells us this. It doesn't matter which day you choose. As long as you choose a day. As long as you choose a day that you pull away. That we cease from doing normal work. And, and, and for me, that's, that's not a, a, in, in my normal, normal rhythms when we were doing services on Saturday and Sunday. For me, that's not Saturday and that's not Sunday. Because I, I don't know if you know this or not, but I usually work the weekends. And so it has to be another day of the week. And so for me, it's Friday. And so when I pull away, there's like no church phone calls, no, no, no text messages, no emails, uh, no, no church talk around the house, no, no writing of sermons. And, and, and I get emergencies and some of those other things. And so it's just totally pulling away. And a lot of people say, well, what do you do on a Sabbath? You, on a Sabbath, you learn to rest your body. If you don't take time to rest your body, guess what? Your body will take time to rest itself. Either in the hospital with a cold or the flu, or our bodies require rest. And you also, on the Sabbath, you recharge your emotions. You need, you need quietness. You need recreation. You need to do something that, that it recreates energy in you. It recreates something in you. You need time for relationships because guess what? We were made for relationships. You need to refocus your spirit, whether it's through, through prayer and the reading of Scripture and worship and some of those other things. Listen, I get it. I get it in this, this quarantine. Sometimes this is a, a little bit difficult of the relationships and, and recreation, but the Bible, Bible would just simply call this worship. And worship is like coming to that place. This is what the Sabbath does. Worship is coming to that place, putting everything in the proper perspective. I don't know if you've noticed this, but you can come into a worship service. You can worship him, and you can bring in a big problem. And all of a sudden, something happens, and it refocuses your spirit. It gives you another perspective. This is what happened to David all through the Psalms. And all of a sudden, your problem doesn't seem as big as it once was, or you're reminded that God is in control. And all you have to do is just trust him. You understand what it means. Listen, I'm telling you this verse. I'm learning this verse more and more. Just, just be still. Just be still and know that I'm God. See, that's the Sabbath. It's when you just remind yourself, just be still and know that I'm God. Know that I'll be exalted over the nations. Know that I'm in charge of this whole thing. Sometimes when you come out of that and it refocuses you and give you another perspective, now you have more energy to deal with the things that you need to deal with and it's true in my life, maybe it's true in your life, that if you say, you know what, I'm too busy for a day off, I'm too busy to spend time with God one day a week, then, then you're too busy. So the first thing is this, is rest is a command, but the second thing is this, we just got to understand this, rest is a blessing. Rest is a blessing. In, in Exodus chapter four, uh, 31, verse 14 and 17, he's like fleshing this out, and he says, watch this, he said, you shall keep the Sabbath because it's holy for you. Everyone who pray, profanes the Sabbath shall be put to death. And that's interesting that he said that because basically you're dying a slow death. There's all kinds of medical research that if we don't have healthy rhythms, 
it can shorten our life. And so he goes on, verse, and it continues, he says, whoever does, whoever does any work on it, the soul, that soul shall, shall be cut off from, from among the people. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, a solemn rest, a holy to the Lord. Who does any work on the Sabbath shall be put to death. Therefore, the people of Israel shall keep the Sabbath, observing the Sabbath throughout their generations as a covenant. Twice he uses this word, watch this, as a covenant. For how long? Forever. Verse 17, he says, in case you didn't get that, verse 17, it is a sign forever between me and the people of Israel in the days of the Lord made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. And the scripture says, in Romans, fact is, it says that as Gentiles, when we accepted Christ, we were grafted in. We were grafted into Israel. We were grafted into the family. And so the Bible encourages us and tells us and commands us to understand this issue about this issue of the Sabbath. And, that, and the scripture also tells us is that God rested on the seventh day and was refreshed. Here's the interesting thing. It never says that he was tired. Is it possible that if we will work six days and rest one day, we will not get tired? Is it possible that we are overlooking one of the greatest benefits of the Sabbath, and that is refreshing the soul? Remember when we started this talk out together, this sermon out together, I talked about it's not so much about the hours of sleep that you're getting, it's about how you're resting in him and being refreshed. Let me ask you this question. We're all in this kind of quarantine together. Let me just ask you, have you ever gotten to the point? You couldn't, you couldn't make a decision because you, you couldn't think clearly because you were just, you were just too tired? I wonder how many problems in life could be solved because if we just rested. I wonder how many problems in life can't be solved because we're just too tired. What about emotionally? Have you ever been emotionally exhausted? Have you ever blown up? <laughs> you don't have, if you're in your home with your family, don't raise your hand on that one. But have you ever lost it? Have you ever blown up? Have you ever just lost it? And then someone confronted you or someone said something, and then what would you say? Probably normally what all of us say, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm just so tired. I'm so sorry, I'm just exhausted. I'm so sorry, I'm just stressed. Well, maybe sometimes we should just give the real answer and say, hey, I'm so sorry, I'm, I'm violating one of the commands of Scripture. And this may be just a consequence of that. How many problems could be solved in life if we just simply followed the principles of God, the Word of God, to be refreshed and be refueled? Jesus said this about the Sabbath. He said, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath, so the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. And see, the Pharisees, they were talking about violating a tradition, the traditions of man. And he's saying, you, you don't understand this issue of the Sabbath. You've made the Sabbath some legalistic thing and some religious duty. And I didn't make man for the Sabbath. Guess what? I made the Sabbath for man because it's a blessing. For me, it's not a legalistic thing. I mean, there are times that I break the Sabbath. When there's a death in our, in, our, in our church, there's an emergency in our church. And we all get that. And we all get those rhythms. And in other words, this issue of Sabbath is a blessing from God, from, from heaven. It's a blessing. See, we, we got to... You've got to understand this. The Sabbath rest is a command. And it's a blessing to us. And the last thing is this, is rest is a benefit. You have to understand the benefits of this. Rest is a benefit. I want to show you in, some, in something in Psalm 92. Psalm 92 is written about the Sabbath. And so I'm just going to grab a couple of verses. And, and here, here's what he says, Psalm 92, verses 1 and 2. He said, it is good, good, to, good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to your name, O Most High, to declare your steadfast love in the morning and your faithfulness by night. That's really how our Sabbath could, should start off, is we're just aware that we're given this day to the Lord. It's a remembrance of him. It's an awareness of him. Verse 10 out of Psalm 92, he says, But you have exalted my horn like the wild 
ox and you have poured over me fresh oil. Fresh oil is just a picture of anointing, but it's also a picture of being, being refreshed. And because I took the day off, because I honored the day, because I gave it to the, the Lord and, and pulled away, I have been anointed, what he's saying, with, with fresh oil. Uh, Karen, I think, was the first one to, to talk about this one time on a vacation we were on, and it was a, it was a real busy time of ministry, and, and we're on this vacation, and Karen looked over at me, and uh, we, were, we were traveling somewhere, and so she looked over at me, and she says, hey, have you ever noticed that when we pull away, when we're on vacation, it's easier just to hear from him? Things become clearer in his words. See, this is what the psalmist is talking about. He's talking about this issue of being refreshed. Man, there, there was a time in my life, and I've told you, I, I've had unhealthy uh, habits and unhealthy rhythms, and I'm still working through that. It's always a temptation for me. And, and I, I went through a, a period where I, I wouldn't take Fridays off because I just simply feel guilty about it. And I'd feel like that I, I should be doing something. And, and I, I realized that, that, I realized that you know what, it's a lot like stopping to, to, to get gas and and I, 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 I hate, I mean, I hate to get gas. I hate to stop to get gas because sometimes I just feel like it's just, it's simply a waste of time and I'm losing valuable time. I mean, in the Jones household, when the kids were young and they still talk about it, whenever we'd go on a vacation, I mean, we had a motto and our, our motto was simply this, no stops but gas stops, no stops but gas stops. Everything happens when we, get a ga- when we stop to get gas. We go to the bathroom, we get something to eat, and then we do, we do that as quickly as we can because we're going we're gonna to lose our place in line, we're going we're gonna to be late, we're losing valuable time. And sometimes we're on a vacation to where there wasn't even, we didn't have to be there at a certain time. And I mean, I was just like always in a hurry. And so we would, we would just, we would get in the car and, and because I didn't want to, I don't, didn't want to lose valuable time. And then, and then we got that, like that GPS system and they gave you the estimated time of arrival. It was always my goal to try to beat that time. And I don't even know why. But it would drive me nuts when the girls needed to stop, and it wasn't, and I didn't need gas. I still had a three-quarters of a tank. I still had half a tank of gas, and, and I didn't like to stop to get gas because I just felt like we were doing nothing. And then we were in Texas, and we had one grandson at, at that time, uh, Gavin, and so there was a death. A family friend passed away in East Texas, and so, <coughs> excuse me, so... So Brittany went with us, and Gavin, and Gavin was like like two years old, and and she's like, Dad, we're, I mean, it's not, it's not just, you know, it's not just gas stops. We're going to have to stop, and we're going to have to stop often. And so we started stopping. I mean, we had to stop for Gavin like almost every hour, every couple hours, and it was it was literally driving me nuts. And then we had this diaper emergency. I mean, I mean, it was just like this horrible emergency. And she said, pull over. And I pulled off the interstate and we pulled onto some farm to market road. That's just a little word in te- a little road in Texas. And and we stopped there. We're all out of the car because I couldn't take it in the car. And we get out of the car and and people started stopping and seeing if we needed help. And we had some great conversation. And and then we we pulled away and I started, I just started thinking. I started thinking about about all the memories we made on that trip and some of the greatest memories we made on the trips and when we, when we stopped. We just stopped to get gas, and I wondered how many great memories have I missed in life because I've been in such, I've been such a hurry. I mean, if, I mean when you look at this, if I, don't, if I don't stop to get gas on a trip, then I could leave my family stranded on the side of the road and the the best thing I can do for my family on a trip is to stop and to get gas so we have plenty of fuel to make it to our destination. You can't see it as it's, it's doing nothing. You can't see it as it's just wasted time. You have to see it as there's a benefit to stopping and refueling and getting gas. And The, the same thing is true with your life. The best thing you can do for your family, <coughs> the best thing that I can do for my family, is to rest and to be refreshed. Psalm 92, 12 says, The righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like cedar in Lebanon. And 
Psalm 92, 14 says the, they still bear fruit in old age. Remember, he's still talking about the, the Sabbath, healthy rhythms. They're ever full of sap and green. While they still, why will they still be fresh in old age? Because they rested. They rested one day a week their whole lives. This is a psalm for the Sabbath. Would you like to be fresh and flourishing in your old, old age? Would you just like to make it to old age? Sheep don't like to lay down. That's why he says in verse 2, he has to make them lie down. I mean, when you look at that in the verse, it's strong language. It's forcing let me ask you, has God ever, ever made you lie down? Because if you don't slow down, and I've learned this, if you don't slow down, God will make you lie down. He will make you slow down because he cares about you, because he, lo he loves you. Listen, let me tell you something. God did not cause COVID-19, but he will use it in your life if you will let him. Could it be? Could it be? that we are realizing what is more important in this season. Families are spending more time together. Families are hanging out together more. Could it be in this season we're becoming better people? People are connecting together naturally in our church becoming buddies and helping each other, calling each other, praying for each other, going to get groceries, serving them, helping them, meeting a need. Could it be we're realizing at a deeper level that seeing somebody on the screen doesn't replace being in the same room with them? Yes, we have to do it now because of social distancing, but could it be we're learning? Could it be that we're becoming better people? Could it be that in this season when we're forced to slow down that God is doing something to help us understand? Listen, I, I, I find myself having more and more just easy, unhurried conversations with people in our church and outside of our church, just having, having conversations with them. Listen, David, Pastor David's going to come and, and just play as we, as we close our service, but maybe you, for your, maybe you and for your family in this time of, of quarantine, maybe it would be healthy for you just to establish some, some healthy rhythms. I mean, we, we've, we've done that as a staff. In fact, is it's still stuck in my Bible when uh, we came up with the ABCDs of working from home. I wanted the ABCs because that reads better, but we just couldn't get rid of D, and, and so maybe it will help you. And so we just came up with the ABCDs. And the A is avoid living in your work. If you're going to work from home, avoid living in it. Don't, don't overwork and don't work from your bed. Be accountable to someone. The second thing is, is just be intent intentional about the discipline, the rhythm of your life. Find a, find a healthy rhythm that you and your family agree on. Who's going to work when and how is that going to work and who's going to take care of the kids? Connect with people. And force yourself just to make a call, a Zoom call, a phone call, a text message or something. Just still connect with people. And then the D is simply this, just dispel guilt for not working more. Spend time. Man, spend time with your family. Let them know when you're technically off. Listen, there's always going to be more to do. Man, I learned in my trip to Texas with my family. And it's sometimes in those interruptions of a trip, it's sometimes in those interruptions of life that God just builds in a memory. And Jesus said this in Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 30. He says, come to me. All who labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Again, not sleep. I'll give you rest. Yes, sleep's a part of that. 
take my yoke upon me and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. He is the only one that can give you rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Maybe in this season, God's going to teach us what it means to trust him. What it means to be still and know that he is God. What it means to have healthy rhythms, healthy connections with people. Can we understand the importance of worshiping in a church with people that we know, that we do life with, we have relationships. We pray for one another, we encourage one another, we support one another. And so maybe when, when this service ends, when you finish watching this servant service at your home, maybe for you, maybe some homework for you is just to have a conversation with your family. What are your work rhythms? rhythms? When are you off? When is family time? What is that going to look like? What is rest going to look like? How many hours of the day are you just going to be addicted to news? When are you going to take a day? So on that day, we're going to pull away no paid or unpaid work. We're going to worship. We're going to hang out as a family. We'll figure out meals. We'll figure out all that other stuff. How are you going to spend time together? How are you going to meet a need with somebody else? Maybe in this season, because it's true of the Scriptures. Here's the crazy thing about the Scriptures. All the writers, just as Pastor Eli has said about Paul in prison, all the writers of Scripture, they were writing Scripture under duress. They know what it's like. And they found that he is your strength and he is your comfort and he is your support. And you can stand and you can rest in him. Maybe the Lord is calling us to deeper community. Deeper love, deeper love for one another, deeper love for him. Maybe in this season we're learning how important relationships are around us. And maybe you just need to accept him and ask him to come into your life and forgive you of your sins and start a relationship with him. If that is you, we'd like to help you with that. Email us at fellowshiptherockies.org is the best way to communicate with us. Whether you'd like to accept him, whether you'd like to follow him in believer's baptism, whether you'd like for us to help meet a need in your life or connect you with somebody, we'll do whatever we can to help you. Email us at fellowshiptherockies.org. As we close... Let me just pray for you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love and we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for just the power of your name. And May tonight, may we learn how to rest in you. May we learn how to trust you. Father, may we not waste this season. We know you did not cause this season but you desire to use this season in our life. Maybe it'll be a time when we deepen our relationship with you, we deepen our relationships with one another. We talk about expectations of the family. We talk about when we're going to work and where we're going to spend time together. May we not waste this moment. And Father, I ask you give rest. To your children, you give rest to their souls. You refresh them. And they're able to talk about your love and your peace. And we look forward to see what you're going to do. For we ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. If you want to communicate with us, email us at fellowshiptherockies.org. God bless you. And I pray you know the peace of Christ.